Just say what you want to receive in today's service. Just worship the name of the Lord. Just worship him. Give him the fruit of your lips in a few seconds. Oh, Tanamanda, Shara Bragalado, Shana Maladosa. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. We thank you for the privilege to be in your presence again. Oh, we thank you for the gift of life. We give you all the glory, dear God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Just before you take your seats, I want us to read Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. Let's read what we have on the screen. One, two, three, go. Amen. NKJV, you will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Thank you, Jesus. Come and have your seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. I want to teach this morning on the keys to obtaining and enjoying favor. Keys to obtaining favor. It says, you will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. This was a psalmist prayer. You will arise. So what it means is that favor doesn't just jump. Favor is sought. You seek for favor. Favor doesn't just jump. You seek earnestly for favor. It says, you will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her it means there is a set time that you must seek for so favor doesn't just jump favor is something that you must earnestly seek labor is good but favor is better you can walk very hard but there is something about walking hard with ease you know you can diligently labor you can labor very hard but when the Lord grants you favor everything comes with ease and that's why it's very important that you must seek for favor. Psalm 119, verse 58, the Passion Translation. It says, with all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promise. This is another prayer. It says, with all my heart, I seek your favor. So you need to bring out the all of you to ask for the favor of God. Because there is something about the favor of God. It makes you walk so much and exploit is brought. You see your life producing a lot of tremendous results. This is Shift Conference this morning. You see, one of the ways you can shift from a point that you are to another point is when the favor of God embarrasses you. You can shift from somewhere to another point when the favor of God embarrasses you. Say, with all my heart, I seek. There are places, there are levels that you are in that you need to pray for to leave because that level has expired. That's why it shifts. There are seasons. Sometimes you can stay on a season and you are celebrating. Wow, I'm doing amazing. I'm doing this business. It's great. And that season has long ago expired because many times, many people are not sensitive to the new door of favor. So they stay there. And why you go to celebrate what you have, but there is something more that you can have. If you seek him, if you seek for favor, with all my heart, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you have promised. Exodus 33 verse 13. Let me show you an example of a man that sought the favor of God. Exodus 33 verse 13. It says, we are told that Moses prayed to God that if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you. And continue to find favor with you. Moses prayed to God, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. Let me tell you something very interesting. Moses was asking God for wisdom. You see, sometimes when you hear the word favor, you think it's big cars alone. You think it's that great job. You think it's just about promotion. You know, many of us have constrained. We have, we have, we have, we have defined. We have, we have a, a, a box definition of what favor is. So when you don't have, when you're not, when, when, when you're, probably you are due for marriage and you have not yet married. And there are other things that are happening around your life. You don't know that God has been favoring some other things. 
Because why? You have a program definition of what favor is. But look at the story of Moses. He prayed to God. Say, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways. He was asking God for wisdom. You know why? Because wisdom is a form of favor. Wisdom is favor. Wisdom is a kind of favor. So Moses sought for wisdom to lead the people of Israel. Let me show you something. How I know wisdom is a kind of favor. If you look at 1 Kings 3, verse 6 to 9, CV, contemporary English version. 1 Kings 3, verse 6 to 9. <clears throat> it says, Solomon answered, My father David, your servant, was honest, honest and did what he commanded. What was happening is that King Solomon was taken after his father David. So he went to the mountain Gibeon. And while he was there praying to God on how he was going to lead the people, he asked, you know, God asked him, what do you want? Anything you ask of me, I will give you. Solomon did not ask for riches. He didn't ask for any other thing, but he asked for wisdom. He said, you know, I am very young and know so little about being a leader. And now I must rule your chosen people, even though there are too many of them to count. He says, please make me wise and teach me the difference between right and wrong. Then I will know how to rule your people. If you don't, there is no way I could rule this great nation of yours. He needed to exceed his father's level. He needed to rule the people. He did not ask for more riches. He didn't ask for more mansions. He asked for wisdom. Because you see, the labor of fools can weary them because they don't know how to go into the city. <laughs> there is wisdom. It's possible to labor and labor foolishly, but you can labor wisely. The labor of fools weary them because they don't know how to go into a city. So there is a city that God has set aside for you in this season. But you see, you need the wisdom of God so you can labor wisely. King Solomon could have taken after the father's throne and you, the father's throne would have been nowhere anymore. Do you realize that some people that their father has lived a particular life and they handed over their legacy but making the father die, the, the business died. The company died. The company is no longer in existence. It's not because the man did not do anything, did not put something on the table, but the children did not labor wisely. So they killed their father's business. King Solomon knew that, ha, ah, if he asks for more riches, he can have more riches, but he doesn't have what it will take to sustain it. So he asked God, he says, I won't ask for riches. I won't ask for any other thing. But you see, I will ask for wisdom. Give me wisdom as a leader to rule over these great people. And let me tell you something very interesting. King Solomon asked for wisdom. He got it. Now see, wisdom is a kind of favor. If you go down to 2 Chronicles 9, verse 1 to 7. CV. Quickly. 2 Chronicles 9, verse 1 to 7. CV. It says the queen of Sheba. Listen. Oh. I'm not sure if we have CV. No, KJV. So please just listen. 2 Chronicles 9, verse 1 to 7. CEV. So I can read it when you get home. The queen of Sheba. Head of how famous the wisdom made Solomon famous. The queen of Sheba heard how famous Solomon was. So she went to Jerusalem to test him with difficult questions. Hmm. She took along several of her officials. She traveled all the way from her province. She took along several of her officials and she loaded her camels with gifts of spices, jewels, and gold. When she arrived, she and Solomon talked about everything she could think of. He answered every question, no matter how difficult it was. Listen, oh, thank you, my darling. The queen was amazed at Solomon's wisdom. She was a queen, remember? She had a position. But she traveled all the way with all her officials. She came with a test. Ah, ah, I've heard that you are famous. Your wisdom has been spreading around. I have come personally. You know, there's something you know and there's something you come to know personally. <laughs> so she had to travel. She left her own kingdom. Let me come and test it. She prepared hard questions. Very difficult questions. So she brought it with all our officials. Imagine, imagine the, the nation, national embarrassment. Imagine if Solomon had not asked God for wisdom. She brought all of it. The Bible says the queen was amazed at Solomon's wisdom. She was breathless, number one, when she saw his palace. The food on his table, his officials, all his servants in their uniform, and the sacrifices he offered at the Lord's temple. So you see, Solomon was excellent. 
excellence is a kind of favor. <laughs> because you see, there is a how to do things. When people come in, it attracts men to you. It says she was breathless. She said, Solomon, in my own country, I had heard about your wisdom and all you have done. But I did not believe it until I saw it with my own eyes. And there is so much I didn't hear about. Do you know what she said? You are greater than I was told. Your people and officials are lucky to be here where they can listen to the wise things you can say. And listen, in verse 9, the queen of Sheba gave Solomon more than four tons of gold, a large amount of jewels, and the best spices anyone had ever seen. So Solomon, because of his wisdom, his wisdom was attracting more favor. Wisdom is a kind of, he had wisdom, he had favor because he was wise. In other words, because he had it, he was attracting more favor. So in other words, he had wisdom as a form of favor. It was now multiplying. That even the queen, when she came, she sought after his wisdom. And the Bible says she gave him gifts, tons and tons of gold. See, there are breakthroughs that can happen in your life simply by God embarrassing you with divine wisdom. There are places that your look cannot carry it all, But when you carry the wisdom of God, you are a carrier of favor. There are places you can enter because you are wise. Government officials will be looking for you to get into a government house. They know they cannot take a decision until you are there. That's wisdom. Wisdom is a great form of favor. Deborah sat under the palm tree. People were coming to ask. There was a chaos in her land. People were coming together to ask, inquire. Of what can happen? What is the next thing? That's what wisdom does. Wisdom makes you famous. Wisdom commands men. Wisdom is attractive. Wisdom makes you a sought after. People will be queuing up to look for you. Simply because you are wise. Have you, have you, do you, I don't know if you are, a, you, are, you, are, you are from that kind of family. There are families that you are not the first child. You can even be the last. The others can be doing well. It's not, I'm not talking about people who are not doing well, but your parents cannot take a decision until you are there. <laughs> wisdom is favor. Wisdom esteems a man. And King Solomon asks for it. Quickly, what are the keys to obtaining this favor? What are the keys to obtaining divine favor? Number one, confess favor. Confess it. Be intentional about it. There are so many people that are loud in what is negative about them than what is positive. Confess favor. Proverbs 18 verse 21, the Passion Translation. Proverbs 18 verse 21, the Passion Translation. He says, your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. And the talkative person will reap the consequences. So, what you talk much on is what you reap. He said, words are so powerful. We need to know how to be intentional about what we say. I have met ladies who will say, ah, I'm a man, a man. After all, my family, now so will they marry. My family, we're not doing well. What was the point? I have met a lady personally who told me there's no need for her to go and apply in that company because in her family, people don't go to, don't, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't find themselves in big companies. Yes, you can be loud and say and go along with what I'm saying. But the truth is that some people have these mindsets. Nobody is doing well and you stay there. You have accepted the norm in your home. Not doing well. I came from a family where marriages don't do well. In my family, people marry anyhow. Some people get pregnant out of wedlock. I said, confessing. And will you, you will do better. And will you change this pattern? And will you change this order? I was confessing. The Bible says, casting down imaginations. Every stronghold. You must be intentional about speaking the word of God. Casting out thoughts by saying loud confessions. The devil will tell me, look at you, what are you saying? <laughs> you are deceiving yourself. You will end up like the others. I said, no. I will say it loud. There are times your confession needs to be loud, not silent. Because why? Sometimes when it's silent, it's mixed. Things are going on in your heart. But you make loud confession. You make it personal. Don't just say, hey, I am the... And will you put your name there? I said looking for scriptures. 
scriptures that were talking about me. I didn't leave it as you, this. I'll put my name there. You have to confess with the word of God deliberately. Your words give life. So when you speak life about your life, so you will produce it. You produce it. I said speaking. Psalm 5 verse 12, it says, For you, O Lord, we bless the righteous. So in other words, I can be blessed. I am blessed. With favor, you will surround him as with a sheet. So favor protects. So in other words, do you know what it is? With favor, he will surround the righteous like a shield. You know what a shield is? Something that protects you. Imagine rain falling and you're carrying an umbrella. Now imagine it's in favor courts. What it means that you are, you are, there's, your umbrella is the favor. So you are being protected. Nothing else gets to you. You are carrying, you are holding, the, you are holding favor. So it means that everybody that sees you sees favor. With favor, you surround the righteous with a shield. So when things come that don't look like the favor of God, you know the scripture. You confess it. Everybody may not be doing right, but I am doing right. My pocket may not look like my confession, but I'll keep on confessing. Because why? With favor, you have surrounded me like a shield. So favor protects. So anything that I see that looks like wants to destroy me, no. Because I know that I am shielded with favor. It says, Revelation 3 verse 8, I have said before you an open door and no one can shut it. Listen, what you know is what you live by. What you know is what you confess. That's why you must have the knowledge of God so that you can confess it. They that know their God shall do exploits. So the only way I can do exploits is that I know and I speak it and exploits becomes my fruits. Number two, I appreciate people who are carriers of favor. I appreciate them. It's not every time you criticize. Listen, so many of us, because of what is happening in our society, in our nation, when you see somebody really making money, you can't believe that person is making money genuinely. You think person is doing yahoo, yahoo. You think person is pressing keys. So you criticize so much. You cannot compliment. You say, ah, beggy. Forget that. Somebody is telling, do you see that this guy just traveled? He's traveling to different places. He's making serious money. Like, forget it. Do you know what he's doing? Do you know? <laughs> Every time, do you know? Do you know? The person may just know the knowledge of God. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Forget it. They do shortcuts. It's not do you. You too. God is your shortcut. You have so, you have so, you have so gone with the wrong mindset that you don't believe people can be making it genuinely. Some of you cannot see within your smoke choirs. Let me not call choir. Within your small circle, you are so that your heart is so full of negativity that you cannot, you can't, you can't be satisfied. You, you, you are not comfortable when you see another person doing well. Don't say Jesus, oh, Jesus knows you. You cannot. You are not comfortable with it. A sister comes to church and she's smiling. She's telling testimony. She says, oh, maybe she shared testimony today. She said testimony next day. She said, and I said, I beg you now. You say, Danny. You've not said it with your heart. but You would not say it with your mouth, but in your heart. Hey. After service, you can even go and meet the sister to say, congratulations. God is doing marvelous thing for you. But you see your heart. Eh? You have caused the sister and her generation. You have said, I beg you to do your family self. Let me tell you what I'm trying to say. Listen, you, appreciation is not a thing of just the mouth. See, what you say inside is louder than what you speak. Spirit, this thing, spirit, is very deep. <laughs> because have you ever wondered why? Ah, He's like, but I'm saying the right thing. Why is it that? What are you thinking? As a man thinks, it's not as a man speaks. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So my thought becomes me. So when you truly go and meet someone and appreciate the person, what did you think of? Did you really think appreciation? Or you were just a dramatic person? It's very deep. God had to teach me this thing personally. What do you think of? Because why? So that you can begin to purge your thoughts before you speak. 
What are you really thinking about? Do you sincerely compliment people? Or do you do it politically? Do you do it politically? Are you really kind to people? Are you really... See, Proverbs 11, Proverbs 11 verse 17, TPT, let me show you something. It says, a man, TPT, the Passion Translation, Proverbs 11 verse 17. A man of kindness attracts favor. A man of kindness. Appreciating people is a kind attitude. A man of kindness attracts favor. So when I appreciate, I attract. So it means that when I think wrongly of people, and even when I speak the right thing, because in my heart, because your mind is speak, let me tell you, words are transported. So in other words, when I speak the wrong things and it comes out of my mouth, when I say to the person, the negativity is more transferred than what I really say. A man of kindness. So what it means is that whatever I think, through what I think I do, I attract it. A man of kindness attracts favor. A cruel person, look at it. A cruel man attracts nothing but trouble, nothing but destruction. How are you kind with your words? Every time my people were getting my, my friends around my circle, I want me them. I say, Kai, I love what God is doing in your life. And I will bless them. I will give a gift. Kindness. I will give a gift. I will appreciate the person. You need, to, you need to be sensitive to know who to appreciate that are carriers of evil. If you look at the story of in Genesis chapter 24, time will not permit us to read. I love that story so much. This was an act of kindness. But she did not know that Abraham's eldest servant was carrying favor. Listen. Abraham sent his eldest servant to another land to look for a wife for his son Isaac. Rebecca was at the well drawing water. She was drawing water. Her mother probably sent her. It was in the cool of the evening. You know, she was drawing water from the well. You know, have you ever drawn water from where? Is, is it uh, a comfortable thing to do? Eh? I remember one time my husband told us to, that we need to go and see his mother. They have one way that they reserve a reservoir. So I said, oh God, I'm feeling headache. Oh, Jesus. Because when I thought about the father that we need to draw water, in the house that time, I said, ah, my God, I cannot even imagine myself going to discomfort. So I, I, I dramatized I was feeling headache, but I asked God for mercy. <laughs> so that you won't go and say she lied, so I can lie. I'm there, go. <laughs> so what am I trying to say? Drawing water from well is very difficult, an uncomfortable thing. But you see, she was at the well drawing water. She didn't know who had come. Abraham's eldest servant was a carrier of favor. He was carrying her favor. Is it possible that while she was in her mother's house, she has been praying on for true years that God give me the right man, give me the right man. But she didn't know the how the right man will come. So she stayed by the well and she was drawing the water. And this funny servant came and said, please, can you give me water to drink? You know the annoying thing about that scripture? He didn't ask for water for just himself. He extended it. He, didn't, he have not received, you know, Oliver Twist. You have not received what you are begging for. You are asking for more. He now asks for water, for, 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 for camels. You know, you know the story of camels. They drink water anyhow. I think it was about 10 camels. I can't remember the number. So you can imagine her drawing pain. Drawing, drawing. She said, oh, I will. She gave, she, 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 was, she spoke kind words and gave kind acts. She was giving, she gave the man. She gave, I can imagine her saying, is it enough? She was feeding the camels without knowing that. The servant was carrying favor. Is it possible that some of you have missed out on the recommendations that God has in store for you because of the way you behaved? She was there. She acted to a stranger without knowing that she was going to be strangely favored. See, we need to be careful how we behave because you don't know who is carrying what you have been praying for. She was there. Kindness is a position that makes you attract favor. She was there positioned. She acted kindness to a stranger. Let me tell you, the real test is not when you are kind to your friends alone. 
The real test is when you can be kind to people that are not even your friends. In fact, let me tell you, the real test is when you can be kind to your enemies. No wonder that scripture says, love your enemies. <laughs> was it a condition? Was it a command? That's the real test. To the one that despises you, the one that betrays you. The real test is when you can be kind to the enemies, when you can be kind to stranger, when you can be kind to that gate man because you don't know who is carrying favor for you. Do you realize that when he came to Esther, it was her guy that carried her CV. The custodian. What was, what was the work? Because see, you don't know. Let me tell you. One of the ways, one, I remember a story my uncle shared, a very influential man in the city where I was before I got married. Do you know that the person that recommended somebody for the managerial position that the person was occupying his coming was his gate man. Simple thing. Say, ah, Oga, every time this man pass, this man, they always, he, they always greets me. He greets every single person. And he will give me, the same gift he will give to this person, he will give it to me. This guy was coming to look for a job in my uncle's company. Do you know that he failed interview, but he did not fail attitude? He failed the interview. He wasn't qualified. But you see, when he came to attitude, because it is not your, it's not, it's not your intelligence that can carry, but your attitude. It was attitude. That was the gate man was the one that recommended, sir. Ah, there is this, he described the man. There is this boy that is always coming, coming for a job, coming to, he, he comes to apply a job, he came for interview. I said, how far now? Come on, uncle, like that is gate man. Because you don't know. The king you are looking for, you don't know the, the relationship the king has with his servants at the gates. A man could say, ah, the guy did not pass. Do you know the gates man around? Oga, 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 wind down, oga, 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 wind down. Oga, that man, that man is the real man you are looking for for that job. Oga say, why? He said, the man has respect. Sir, he will not drive away your clients. Ah, because you see, sometimes the client can come with rags. The client may not come in the way they should come for the kind of God they are looking for. But you see, he will treat everybody equally. Attitude can bring you to the throne. Who knows how Esther behaved and sought favor from custodian? Who knows? Hey, hey, Lord. Lord, help me to be like Esther. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me. God, make me to have Esther, the kind of thing that Esther had tried. Do you know the positioning she did? This thing is beyond just giving gift. Oh. Some of you need to learn how you talk on phone. You can be talking to the person that God has put in place that will connect you to that job. What are you talking here on phone? You don't know he's calling you. This is not just about marriage, but let me use marriage. You are praying for a right partner. You are praying. And somebody is calling you, say, who be that? Mugu, who be that? Who be that? Then you now hear you drop call. Then you are praying for a right partner. You may not like the person that you are praying. You may not have a person that have called you. But the person can like somebody that likes you. Who is that? Who be that? You have not, you, you, you've not even checked that you have not called you because that's a foolish somebody. But the person has heard you at the other end. <laughs> we are praying for shifts. We need to shift our attitude. <laughs> You need to be sensitive. You don't know who is carrying favor. You don't know. You don't know. Hey, Lord, I'm praying for boys. I'm not just talking to ladies now. Sorry, I'm using the example of female. It's everybody. Hey, Lord, give me boys. Give me boys. What do roots do? What do roots do? Lord, give me, give me boys. But it's good to pray the prayer. But you see, why you pray the prayer points? Behave like your prayer points. Give me boss, give me boss, or I die. Hmm. Roots entered a strange land. Inside the strangeness of the land that she did not even know, she was kind to her mother in law. She will go out on the field. She was not selfish, she was selfless. She will think beyond her. All your own is only you and you and I. What you desire, give it out. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Just say a word of prayer. Lord, help me. Help me in my attitude. Help me in how I behave. 
help me to position myself so I can attract divine favor. Kalabranda shana la brada la dosha. Telebraga balado shana la brada o shene la bolodosa. Oh, la brega la bande shele brega la dosha na la baladosa.